Hello and welcome to Folding Ideas. I'm Dan Olson and I'm joined here this week by Rantasmo, aka Jamie. Um, thank Hello. you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, you, uh, you have a show of your own that you do called Needs More Gay. Yes. And now I stumbled on this uh, a couple months ago through, through a message board and I was, I was hooked. Like, I, I devoured your show. The, uh, it's a very quickly paced, um, very quickly paced sort of comedic, tongue-in-cheek look at gay culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say that that's about, about right. <laughs> and now what was the, what was your impetus behind, uh, behind the show? You know, it really, I mean, I, I, I think, uh, I, I'm, I'm making an assumption here, but I'm assuming you kind of found me through, um, that guy with the glasses. Yes, uh, I think that was the first place I saw you. Which really, I mean, I, I first got acquainted with that site through, um, Nostalgia Chick, actually. I, I saw her, like, on some video that she did on YouTube, and that's really, like, she's really the reason I come back to the site, to be honest. Like, she's, I think, one of the best reviewers out there, and that really, I mean, it kind of started out as just me kind of wanting to be her, I guess, as a, with a big part of it. Um, and just kind of putting together all the things that like, I sort of liked most about her show and kind of talking about something that I am fairly familiar with. Um, so I did this, that first video, the, uh, the about 10 minute, uh, re like recap of Dante's Cove, which is a terrible soap opera, um, about witchcraft and gay people on a beach. Uh, and that led to, um, I kind of, I spent like a day just kind of sending it out to people just kind of, I wasn't really sure. I mean, part of me wanted, and maybe part of me still would kind of be, you know, I definitely would be cool to get onto, uh, the, that guy with the glasses site. At this point, it's probably not. It's you know, it's fairly obvious it's not probably not going to happen. But um, but basically, I spent a day kind of you know, saying it out to people, and uh, a site called After Elton kind of picked up on it, um, asked me to kind of do some more, um, do kind of a different format, which is kind of what what the 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 um, all, all the videos have since then kind of been. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of evolved into, into sort of a kind of a mix of you know like analysis i do I, I still do a few kind of you know movie or series recaps every once in a while but mostly just kind of like just kind of talking for four minutes making some jokes about just kind of different aspects of gay culture and you know gay culture in certain genres of tv film or whatever or what have you and now the uh so the format it's actually gotten much shorter like you said it's four minutes the original mm -hmm. is 10 and certainly stuff on uh, on a lot of other sites reviewtopia that guy with the glasses they most shows try and veer towards the the 15 20 minute mark so it, mm -hmm. it stands out in this just really quick and kind of uh you know quick and brief mm -hmm. um and i think that brevity uh brevity works well it 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 helps keep the humor going a very funny show and great oh, points and now one point that you've made um a couple times and i the first place i saw it was actually in the my little pony episode where you mm -hmm. were talking about you know that uh that that bronies need more gay mm -hmm. which was absolutely hilarious um oh, and my reaction to that uh, to that episode was actually um because you your thesis at the end of it was essentially is this an indication of greater acceptance of gay culture within the mainstream? Mm -hmm. And my reaction was, was almost, I wouldn't say the opposite, but much broader. My personal take on it is that something like the brony phenomenon represents a expanding definition of masculinity mm -hmm. as a whole for, you know, gay, straight, whatever. It's that for a very long time, the definition of, you know, what it means to be male it has been extremely narrow. Mm -hmm. And so this is basically like, it's like, okay, it's, it's becoming more acceptable to be not an A-type, you know, anaerobic, uh, uh, giant, wide-shouldered um, Arnold Schwarzenegger type. Sure. And what, what would you say towards that? Is that too broad is that inaccurate I, I i'd say that's fairly valid i mean one thing you find um really like you know a lot of people a lot of you know men are are in our kind of age group when they were young we would watch girl, uh girl cartoons even if you know uh like like, like a, a lot of you know male kids watched uh my the my little the like 
original My Little Pony cartoon or the, you know, the Care Bears cartoon, then things that really weren't even like, you know, Gem and the Holograms, things yeah. that really weren't targeted towards at that, 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 at that, 6 that were targeted towards girls. Exactly. At 6 a.m., Gem and the Holograms was the only thing on. Mm-hmm. Well, it was the only cartoon. It was that or Jazzercise. Sure. So I'm going to watch the cartoon over Jazzercise. So, yeah, I mean, I, I remember that. I watched, you know, I not so much My Little Pony, but definitely Care Bears and, you know, Gem and the Holograms uh, sure. early mornings. So it's... So you'd say it's just sort of this cultural carry through with the uh, with the age bracket, then. Yeah, I think I, I think like the difference is that people just are willing to admit that they watch those shows now, um, and really, I, I think I, I think just at least the whole, as far as bronies go, I think they're just kind of looking past the whole kind of gender like this is a this is a girl's cartoon. It's more just kind of this is a good cartoon. This is it's really you good. Know, yeah, exactly. So I think overall that's that's a fairly positive thing because I've started to see that, you know, that it's like slowly we're accepting, you know, guys, who, just guys being guys instead of guys being bros or sure. frat guys. Um, right. So I think it's a positive all around. And that was kind of my take. I was sitting here yelling. It's like, no, no, it's guys as a whole. It's not just gay. Yes, it is gay, but it, it's, it's guys as a whole. Guys as a whole. Everyone's benefiting from this. Mm-hmm. Um, and this kind of leads into into a, a bit of the next point, and this is more targeted at gay culture uh, in general. Mm-hmm. Have and this is something that maybe I've noticed, and I don't know what your take on it would be, but a, a tone shift in the in the attitude of of gay media or, or queer media. That if I roll back in my memory to sort of the mid '90s, late '90s, even early 2000s. Uh, queer media was was very explicitly like it wasn't just queer media it was like queer media you know it, almost aggressively not straight and do you think that that's as time goes on that's kind of tempering and it's moving towards more of a baseline of like look we're we're just making shows sort of i do you have like an uh, like an example of like the the queer media like the, that that sort of late nineties kind of style? Particularly, and now this might be a little bit biased because this was the mainstream kind of picking up on it. But something like um, oh dang it, the character's name was Jack. It was that insanely popular sitcom. Uh, oh, uh, Will and Grace. Will and Grace uh, would be sort of the first thing that comes to mind as a truly awful example. Uh, I hated that show. Um, and then on to things like uh, the L word, even even something uh, more like queer as folk, queer as folk um, six feet under or six feet under. Yeah. And Nip Tuck, like early seasons of Nip Tuck, uh, so on and so forth. If they had queer characters, it was, you know, hyper queer. I can see that. I mean, yeah, no, I. I, I, I think the trap that a lot of people kind of get into is they 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 kind of go out go out with the intention of making a show about gay people or really a show like about being gay and they sort of they sort of focus so hard on that that they don't really kind of it, it that the sort of other aspects of the show kind of you know fall to like aren't like don't don't quite they don't, they they don't quite suffer part the show is exactly they sort of suffer as a result. Um, I guess I mean honestly I. I can't think of, the, of, too, of too many shows that have really kind of been in that sort of, have, have been about, I mean, I guess Glee is, is I guess, sort of a big one right now. And I think that one is sort of, uh, it was, I, I, I definitely have to feel that it was made with the intention of at least appealing to gay audiences to a large extent. And, you know, certainly the gay character is a, is a pretty prominent part of the show. I find um, it very hit and miss. I pers- I find my interpretation of Glee is hit and miss. There's some episodes where I'm like, hey, you know what? That was really cool. That was really straightforward. They just kind of, it was just kind of there. And then others, yeah. I'm like, oh. It's a bit uneven. And it's really, a, it's it's a show that's kind of just grounded in, you know, not reality. It's like, it's nothing on that show is normal in the <laughs> way all. it happens. At all. Uh, yes. Or believable. Or, right. Or even sometimes tolerable. Um, sure. So the uh, actually, I remembered another example of what I'm sort of thinking of is something like uh, going back to the the Doom Generation and um, mm. what was the director's name? Greg Araki. 
Iraqi, you know, sort of Iraqi's work in the early 90s, mm-hmm. uh, it, it, kind of the big, you know, middle finger to uh, to straight culture. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you think it's it's pulling back? I mean, Glee is Glee is hit and miss. Um, and is there a risk that as if it pulls back, that it just ends up becoming normal? And is that a bad thing? I I wouldn't say so. I mean, I personally, I would really like to get to the to get to the point where we don't have to, you know, have a show where there's, there's a gay character and all of his plots are about him being gay. I think. I mean, the, the problem here is it's really difficult to to have a gay character on a show without addressing it, without you know, just because of the way the culture is. It's you know, being gay isn't really a non-issue yet, and so whenever there's a gay character, it sort of has to be, like. It sort of it sort of requires it to be an issue, if that makes sense. And this is something that I've kind of I I tend to call it the niche trap. That it's like if you've got kind of that ni- a niche appeal or a niche character, it mm-hmm. it becomes all about that niche. But then if you focus too much on the niche, it, it it's only about that, and it becomes difficult to then expand out from it. But the other side of the trap is well, if you if you don't address it then you're not moving forward at all and you're just right. settling back into the status quo. Mhm. Yeah, it, it's it, it it's a problem. <laughs> and it's really and it's it seems like there's not an easy way to do that just with just how the culture is set up. Um with I mean I uh I, one, one way to think of it is um the show Battlestar Galactica and that sort of or like rather the the remake mm-hmm. um and and sort of the universe that's set up. It's sort of it's, it's really sort of set in a universe where you know, sexuality and gender has really just become a non-issue. Like, there are gay characters on that show, but they really don't ever even acknowledge that they're, like, the other. It, it's really just kind of... It's it's really... It's like sort of a it's, it's a... it's just a world where, you know, sexuality is just not really considered a big deal anymore. And I know I've seen criticisms of Battlestar Galactica. Like, I've seen both sides of it. People have praised Battlestar Galactica for that reason. They've praised uh, Harry Potter universe for that reason and there's also been the backlash of people saying it's like oh well well they're they're sweeping it so far under the rug that it's a non-issue sure and how do you think how are we going to get past that is it just going to take time it's tricky i i i think i think it will take time honestly i think i think that it's just yeah it's 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 just it's really tricky just to have that sort of like yeah, I, I think it'll just take time. Honestly, I, I, I don't, I, don't, I just don't think there's an easy, an, an, an easy solution for it at this point. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a conundrum. <laughs> so now, my thought there would be, if it's just going to take time, so probably over, you know, we're talking a time frame of, you know, fifty years here, almost mm-hmm. on the level of like, okay, our generation grew up with, uh, grew up with. My Little Pony and Care Bears, and then when we got into our twenties and thirties, we're like, you know what, this new My Little Pony's rocks. Let's let's just watch it. Come on, like sure. And then, so maybe another twenty years from now, uh, the next generation will be like, well, we, you know what, we grew up with Battlestar Galactica, and you know what, just get over it. And it'll just that's the thing. Yeah, I I I I feel like it is it is ramping up like a lot, and just in the last you know few decade few decades. Like it, it, like in even in like the eighties, like just some of the shows now that would, would just be like unheard of as far as having you know, like a positive, like realistic gay character just wouldn't exist back then I, the way it does now. You bring that up. I watched, I rewatched uh, a bunch of the first season of Perfect Strangers. You know, there mm-hmm. you go, like mainstream prime time. That that is one of the shows. It's like Garfield or Two and a Half Men. You know, boiled down to the most accessible marketable factors possible and sure. some of the some of the jokes like the cracks that they take at queer uh the queer community i'm like oh my goodness you you can't say that on tv yeah. and towards like you know ethnicities and and even just the premise of the show towards foreigners in general mm-hmm. um if you went in and tried to pitch a show like Perfect Strangers today, uh, they would probably just call the cops. There's actually a show right now. I forget. I forget the name. Oh, I think it's uh, Last Man Standing. It's it's 
Tim Allen's new show. I haven't actually watched it. I haven't it, but seen I've heard, it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard it's basically like, it, it, it's like one of those kind of early 90s, 80s sitcoms and not in a good way where it's just like... Deeply jingoistic and... Yeah. And, and, and you know, without having see, seen it, I mean, it's possible it's just sort of... Maybe it's maybe the intention there was to sort of, you know, make Lampshade. that character the bad guy. They, they, they do, do basically a sort of like all, all in the family type thing where it's like, you know, this this isn't how you're supposed to be, but this guy's like this and, you know, he's not a good guy because of it. I don't know. I Without having seen it, it's hard to say, but... I did see a show, and actually, I guess here's the dark side of it. I did see a show recently. Uh, fortunately, it's been canceled. Um, Outsourced was mm. incredibly terrible uh, I, in its blatant racism. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I actually, I didn't hate Outsourced. I mean, I, I can see how people got pissed off, and after a while, I, it just got kind of, just really just grating for me, kind of like, okay. But, yeah. Also, I, it was poorly I written. I can see what you mean. What, what's that? Also, it was poorly written. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of helps you know to hate a show when it's bad on its own merits and and not just its content. Um, yeah, there's now it, I always feel kind of funny when I have uh, have a discussion like this because it's like oh yeah you know I I didn't like Outsource because I thought it was too racist and and here oh, sure. I am straight white middle class male it's like do do I have any any right to to say this stuff like I'd say so. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's, yeah, <laughs> I would say, I mean, it's, 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 it's there's, no, there's nothing wrong with, you know, just empathizing. And, and I, it's, I guess it's, to some degree, it's, um, it's difficult to, you know, kind of speak for an, like a, an entire, you know, group of people like this is offensive to you. But I think that, you know, if, if you just look at it analytically, it's kind of easy. It's some things are just easy to see that, it, that they're offensive, you know. I think, yeah. <laughs> we actually went through that really fast. Want to pimp mm. your show? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I update. Uh, usually I, I post a blip uh, on Tuesday evenings. Um, and there's and it'll show up on After Realm the day after that. And I typically update YouTube the week after that. Um, so, I'm sorry. Every other Tuesday evening I post a new video to blip. Um, but if you want to just subscribe to my YouTube, YouTube channel, you'll just see stuff a week a week. Uh, later um yeah well thank you <laughs> so much for coming on uh coming on folding ideas it was great to talk to you i i love your insight i love your show uh well, needs more you. gay on blip tv also after elton.com um thank you rantasmo uh thank you i'm dan olson this has been folding ideas feel free to subscribe to uh, needs more gay and feel free to subscribe to folding ideas. If you're watching this on blip TV, the subscribe button is just up there in the corner. And, um, thank you very much for, uh, for everything. We will see you all next time on folding ideas.